There are a ton of really cool YouTube engineers and makers out there. People like William Osman, Michael Reeves, Stuff Made Here, The Hacksmith, and Mark Rover, just to name a few. And these guys are making insanely cool projects. Things like making a basketball hoop that you can't miss on, a robot that cuts your hair, and the world's largest elephant toothpaste. Now these are all awesome projects, but they all have a problem in common. And that's that they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on tools and materials. Here, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. I'm going to be using significantly cheaper tools and materials while still trying to make some really cool projects. So why don't we take a look at the workshop? Actually, it's gonna look a little bit more like this. But before I can give you the full tour, I'm gonna to have to do some cleaning first. Now that everything's a little bit nicer in here, let me tell you all about myself. My name is Nathan, and this is my workshop. I started doing basic woodworking a couple of years ago, and I really fell in love with the whole art of it, and over time, my collection of both wood and tools has grown to the point where now I have my own space here for <laughs> working on whatever project I feel like. Unfortunately though, a lot of woodworking tools and materials are extremely expensive, and as I'm not the richest person out there, I've just kind of had to scavenge a lot of my stuff. Like this shelf here is built entirely out of garbage that I've found just laying around. These shelves I found from a beer distributor that was throwing them away. These posts I found in the woods that somebody had tossed there. And all of the screws that are holding it together I got either from an old wagon that I took apart or an old rowing machine that I took apart. If you look here at this board behind me, pretty much all of these tools have been bought secondhand, used, just wherever I can find them for cheaper than they're going anywhere else. One of the things that I was really lucky to get was this work table. I actually got this from my grandfather who had it for a number of years before he gave it to me. Just from a quick glance, it's pretty easy to tell that this work table has had a long and hard life. There's all sorts of markings in the surface, the wood itself is much darker than it was, the vise is all worn down, and the table itself is kind of wobbly. And I feel bad about leaving you guys with just an intro video and nothing else. So for project number one, why don't I clean up this workbench? To start making any meaningful progress, cleaning this thing up, what I'm going to have to do first is take everything off of it that is uh, currently using this space. And then the plan from there is to resurface the top of the table, add some support to the sides and to the back, potentially bolt it in the wall to add some more security to it, and maybe clean up the vice by up the time. Now that all of the stuff that was taking up space on it has been removed, we can start cleaning the table off. And the first step of that, actually, is going to be hand planing the surface to get rid of all the grossness on top. As you can see, I've already done a little bit of it, and the surface underneath of this grease and junk that's been on here for years is beautiful. And I'm sure it's going to be even nicer once I apply some fresh oil to it. So the table surface itself is rather bumpy and it doesn't plane very nicely. So I'm going to have to use another tool that's a lot more effective for cleaning the surface, which is going to be an orbital sander. Now that the old surface grime has been removed from the workbench, it looks quite a lot better. I started sanding with 80 grit to remove all the heavier stuff on top, then I worked my way up to 120 and then finished at 220. The surface finish is probably just going to be tongue oil, because that's what I have on hand. It's pretty durable, it's not the best possible finish, but it'll definitely do the job here. Now let's start applying some of this oil onto the surface. Wow, that is a beautiful shine on the wood with just a little bit of oil. This is going to be an amazing project once it's finished. Alright, it's been a day and the wood has taken on the color really, really nicely, so I'm super happy about that. 
Now I'm ready to put on the second coat and see if it gets any nicer. The work table has been drying for a couple of days, and even though it is fully dried at this point, it has maintained a really, really nice glossy look, and I'm super happy with how it's turned out so far. But this is just the start of how I'm going to change this work table up. The next step that I'm going to do is to restore the old vise. As you saw earlier when it was placed right on here, it was quite rusty and didn't look super nice. And now, in that condition, it looks quite out of place on this, uh, much cleaner looking table. So let's get to work on restoring that. Hold on one second. I forgot to mention that I put a support beam on the back of the workbench. So here's a quick montage of that. And now back to cleaning the vise. So the part that I'm going to start with here, just because it looks like it's gonna be the easiest to deal with, is this straight section here that connects to the inside part of the vise. This should penetrate into the metal a little ways and start cleaning some of that surface gunk off. And even though that's only been going for a couple of seconds, maybe a minute at most, you can already see that it's made a pretty good difference there in how that looks. And if some of the sections are especially bad and just resistant to being cleaned, you can even use some higher, grades, higher grit sandpaper on there to start removing some of the scale. Now compare that to what the original shot looked like. That's quite the difference. Now I have to do that for the rest of the vise. At this point, there were only a few things I wanted to change about the workbench, and one of those was getting rid of the old paint job, which started with bringing the workbench outside and spray painting the legs. Then I brought it back inside to use a paint roller on the back wooden supports. While I wait for the paint to finish drying, I can get to work on the last step of the desk project. And that step would be dealing with the bottom boards that go onto the desk. Now these ones were like a little shelf area on the very bottom of it. And they, as of right now, do not look amazing. You could use a bit of cleaning up. If you have a super keen eye too, you may notice that this board was not the one that was on the very bottom of the shelf. I actually replaced the white one that I had there with this brown one because it matches the grain of the wood a little bit more closely. And you'll see that even better, especially once this is sanded down. The boards look a lot more homogenous now, their grain matches up quite nicely, and I'm really happy about that. I think they're going to look a lot better than they would have down on the bottom part of the workbench. And I don't think I'm going to give them any stain coat, just because I feel like it would take away too much from the surface. So, pretty much all of the pieces are done, and now I just need to <laughs> clean up the work area and get everything assembled again.
here it is, the fully finished workbench restoration. I'm incredibly happy with how this thing turned out, and just as an example of all the steps we went through, we started with sanding the surface, and then putting a fresh coat of tongue oil on it. After that, we cleaned up the vise, we spray painted the metal legs, we added a regular coat of paint to the back wooden beams, we sanded down the bottom slats, and then screwed them in, and finally assembled the whole thing. And as for the cost, I spent about $7 out of pocket. I had to buy one can of spray paint, and everything else that I used, I just had on hand. But obviously the cost is gonna be a little bit more than that if you factor in the rags that I used on this, along with the sandpaper, and the sanding discs for sanding everything down, and the tongue oil, but all in all, I estimate the total is probably around 20 to 30 bucks max for all of the materials I used for this entire project. And it just goes to show that you can make something really, really high quality, even if what you're starting with doesn't seem that way, and the materials you use aren't insanely expensive. So with a little bit of elbow grease and a little perseverance, you can really do a lot if you set your mind to it. This is an example of the kind of project I'm going to be doing moving forward on this channel, and they're going to vary a bit. I could do some more pure woodworking stuff, it could be more mechanical minded things. but. If you stick around with this channel, you're going to see all sorts of interesting projects on a super tight budget. So if that's something that interests you, consider sticking around for it. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Oh, what are you still doing here? You must really like these sort of videos. Well, if you want some behind the scenes content and to get a little scoop of what I'm doing while I'm making these videos, consider checking out my Patreon. I'll be uploading there at least once a week, so you're going to get all sorts of updates in between the main project videos. It means a lot to me, even if you just check it out and don't feel like subscribing. But for real, that is the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching, and I really do hope to see you in the next one.